Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, we will be talking about environmental apps. Hi, I'm Guy Trainin. And my name is Ashley Roki. And this is iPads in the Classroom. And today we're talking about conservation apps or apps about the environment. And we were sort of talking about how would we say this best and this is what we came up with so there we go so the first app is uh, the first app that we found is pollination to plate and this is actually an app through the University of Nebraska mm -hmm. so um, this basically teaches you about pollination and the foods that are pollinated okay so we just click on play here it brings you to a page where it just explains mm -hmm. pollination how it works and it has some nice visuals and text not too much text though so that's nice yeah, but it's, it's still quite a bit of text. So this is not the kind of text you want in first grade. This right. is middle school and above, I mm -hmm. would argue. Yes. So then it gives you some examples of foods from direct pollination, mm -hmm. indirect pollination, and wind pollination. All right. So that's useful to go to the next part mm -hmm. of this app and playing the game. So a watermelon, your job is to just simply drag it to which pollination you think it fits into. So okay. let's do indirect pollination. Oh no. Okay, okay, let's try again. And there's a comment right okay. after. So that's important to know yes. that, uh, that there's extra information showing yes. up during the game. Yes, it's not just a game, yeah. it gives you information. And now Apple. Well, it does help you understand that bees are important. It does, <laughs> even though I dislike them, but they are important. So yeah, that's basically okay. The so of app. very simple app talks about pollination, talks about a uh, through repeated practice mm -hmm. how important bees are to the environment because most things are pollinated. Most of the things we eat are pollinated by uh, bees or indirectly mm -hmm. by bees and then uh, animals consume those plants and it goes beyond that. So that's a great app to start with. What do you have next? Um, the next app that I have is NRD Trees. Mm -hmm. So this is specific to Nebraska also, okay. so this is nice. Um, when you come to the main page, it's just going to give you a list of the different trees that are mm -hmm. located in Nebraska. So let's just select a tree here. Mm -hmm. And once we do that, it comes up with all the information about these trees. Yeah. And there is photos there. There we go. They take a while to, yes. to load there depending on you know, uh, the network. But you do get a photo of what the tree looks right. like mm -hmm. and so how big it is and all of that. So you could go out and or have students go out and mm -hmm. look for these trees. Um, and it gives you a little bit of information about the tree and where they're located in what zone. Mm -hmm. And that brings me to my next point where you can search by zone. Mm -hmm. So you, not only do you have a list, but you can click on a particular zone. So we'll go over here and click on zone one, and it'll bring you a list of all the trees in that zone. That's okay, so, zone. so if you're in that zone, you can narrow down your search based on that. Yes, and then you can narrow it down even further by going to native or non-native because mm -hmm. it's showing both right now. Yes, and uh, that's really important, a really important discussion, I think, when we're working with kids and we're talking about the environment in a place like Nebraska, where there were no really um, in, uh, that many trees mm -hmm. because it is uh, the Great Plains and right. it was a prairie. Uh, knowing what was native and wasn't native in different zones really, really matters. And even knowing that there are zones, that it's not all the same and moving from east to west, you're seeing very different weather, very different uh, plants mm -hmm. is, a, is a great way. And I think most states, um, through one way or another, have apps to talk about the vegetation in that state. So that's a great way to do some exploration. And if you're out in nature, you can take those photos, bring them back into the classroom, and then uh, share them, check them, make sure that you know what you actually uh, saw. Okay, so that's NRD trees, and I want to talk about a 
different app, and this is an app called uh, The Future of Food, and this comes from National Geographic, and I'll bring it up here. The Future of Food is a really interesting exploration through picture and through words of some options how, of how we will feed the 9 million people that are going to be on Earth. And you can see that, for example, there are diagrams about how do you do this raising of fish inside the ocean so you don't create them in uh, pools and you still uh, control the growth and don't hurt the ocean in, at the same time. So you can do that and you can see that there's a way to maneuver through all of those pages. So this is a very rich information. This is very rich, both from a picture perspective and from a, a text perspective. This is not where elementary is. This mm -hmm. would probably be middle school and up, or if you want as a teacher to present ideas, you can use that. But uh, the kind of text and the kind of reading that is involved here is uh, more than that. And you can see that you can share it. So you can use uh, email, Facebook, and Twitter to share beyond that. And those stories, if you scroll right and left, you get to the next story. If you scroll up and down, you scroll through that story and you learn about these features and these problems around the world. There are nice interactive maps. So if we go back, uh, you can see, for example, the challenge in Africa and you can see, for example, different things that restrict agriculture if it's too high or when it's too hot and dry, the big desert regions. And so you can start seeing and exploring interactively why there's a food problem in Africa and thoughts about how we might go ahead to uh, try and solve it and how it impacts people. So there are personal stories, which again is something National Geographic does really, really mm -hmm. well. And so it connects it to real people and real environment and not just to big ideas. So right. those big ideas do get uh, discussed. There's a little bit of text, for example, for each picture, just to give it context. Mm -hmm. So it, it, for me, it's a fantastic yeah. uh, app, uh, both visually and from a content perspective. It's very thoughtful, um, a lot of information in there. Right, and very realistic. That's yeah. what I like about that. And again, it's, it's confronting a real problem. I mean, we have problem in this problems with uh, food in this country, but as a world, we have to face those questions. And that's part of what this app does uh, very, very well. So this is called The Future of Food from National Geographic. Next app that I want to talk about is called iRecycle. And iRecycle is both an iPhone and an iPad app, so you can run it on multiple things, and that's why it's uh, actually vertical. And uh, what this allows you to get is very quickly information about how do you recycle different things. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, go with paper. And it tells you what can be recycled, right? Mm -hmm. And what I like about it is it's got these little notes up there. For example, recycle it today and buy post-consumer uh, tomorrow. So it tells you where it ends up. And it'll also tell you where you can recycle next to where you are. So it will pull up from your environment where you can recycle things. Now, a paper is really easy to recycle and there are lots. You can see how many options there are. But if you uh, talk about something else, let's say, I don't know, batteries, and we'll click on car batteries, you can see where you can actually recycle those. And I think that the great message, uh, two messages here. One is that there is information out there mm -hmm. that if you have something you don't know how to recycle. Um, recently, um, we wanted to clean our garage and we wanted to recycle paint. And so we said, OK, how do you recycle paint? I don't know, but I do know you can't throw it in the garbage if, right. it's, if it's actually still wet. Uh, because it is uh, very dangerous to the environment. So we went to this app and we said, okay, we've got some latex paint and this will tell me 
there are only three places I can actually recycle near me and only one of them is in Lincoln. So the, the other two are Hastings and Fremont and I'm not driving an hour to an hour and a half away <laughs> just to recycle my paint. Um, there is a waste collection program that happens at a specific day so you actually have to wait for that day in May. It's coming up, we're very happy and that's when you can do that. There are also stores that uh, recycle to um, actually uh, repurpose them for reuse mm -hmm. so if you have a lot of paint they will uh, do that and you also have all the contact information so if kids want to explore how and where and when or even if adults want to explore uh, because they need to recycle something like I do with paint this is a great app to do this so this is iRecycle and um, that's a, an app that anybody can use fairly easily. So today we talked about different apps for conservation and thinking about the environment. And we'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.